Hello there. Welcome to my review of the 1967 film Fathom, starring Raquel Welsh as Fathom Harville, Anthony Franciosa as Peter Merriweather, Ronald Fraser as Colonel Campbell, Richard Bryars as Timothy, Greta Chi as Joe May, Tom Adams as Mike, and Clive Revel as Serapkin. It's directed by Leslie Martinson and written by Lorenzo Semple Jr. So, to the spoiler-free review. Fathom is not a great movie, not by any stretch, but it is a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. The writer and the director are probably most famous for working on the Adam West Batman and, Dutch angles aside, it really shows. There's a mad European who is always cold so has to wear thermals and a heavy coat in the Spanish heat, which I'm sure wasn't a pleasant experience for the actor. An overly complicated but ultimately silly plot of fake MacGuffins and double and triple crossing villains. It's mad and it's camp and I love it. It's certainly helped by Raquel Welsh looking absolutely stunning and being pretty game for anything and everyone else playing it with their tongues firmly in their cheeks. The story is a little overly complicated but it's not unfathomable. The shooting style is fairly naturalistic and makes sense. It's daft, but it knows it and everyone involved seems like they're having a good time. The basic plot is that Welsh is a champion skydiver on a tour of Europe and gets waylaid in Spain with a mission from an intelligence agency to recover something called the Fire Dragon. Everyone is after this object and all is not entirely what it seems with anyone that she meets. And that's about it. If you like 60s kitsch, then this is definitely one to watch. If not, then it's probably not for you. But for me, it's nothing but the best. On to the spoilers. Fathom could be described as a Hitchcockian action thriller, where the main character is pulled out of her own world and into the murky world of the spy thriller, like Cary Grant in North by Northwest, having to use her skills to survive while not knowing who her allies are and who her enemies are, with a MacGuffin that leads her into various dangerous situations that she barely escapes from. It has an empowered female lead who doesn't entirely know what's going on, but is smart enough to work it out pretty quickly, and doesn't need to pick up a love interest along the way. It could alternatively be described as an excuse to get Raquel Welsh in a variety of skimpy costumes while various silly things happen around her, depending on your perspective. The opening scene is a perfect illustration of this, where the camera lingers as it pans up her body, we see her hammering a metal spike into the ground, which she then uses to perfectly pack a parachute. This odd juxtaposition is probably an example of why the movie doesn't really work. Also, having the MacGuffin change to a different MacGuffin half the way th through the film, and for one far less interesting, turning it from a spy thriller to a heist film, doesn't really come off. So Fathom is approached after a skydive by an international intelligence agency, Hades, to help recover a remote detonator for the West's nuclear weapons that may be in the hands of Chinese communists. All she has to do is pretend to land off course in order to plant a listening device. But when she lands, there's a dead body and she is framed by the supposed spies who turn out not to be spies and not to be trying to steal a nuclear remote, but actually recover a priceless Chinese antique that was stolen by the very men claiming to be the Western Intelligence Agency or are they? That's where it gets a little bit complicated, until the very end of the film. Further complicated by the aforementioned mad European Sir Apkin with the body temperature issue, who is unapologetically villainous, perhaps because the writer knew it was getting a little busy. Um, maybe they were attempting to parody the Bond films, but as they also play this character largely for comic relief, it just feels a little out of place. Had the rest of the cast been equally as wacky, the film might have had a second life as a cult classic, 
but it never pushes the camper elements quite far enough. It makes for a slightly uneven tone overall. There's also a murder mystery element over who killed the man Fathom was sort of framed for. It's not massively complicated, but it is perhaps a little over complicated and I think it really would have worked better if the antique was the lie and she was really looking for a nuclear remote. Just because I think that raises the stakes rather than lower them, which is I think what happens in the film now. It might have worked if they'd focused on the seemingly seductive nature of the fire dragon artifact and how this simple item had an almost supernatural power to make people want to acquire it, possibly linking this to a similar unconscious quality within Fathom that connects the two and makes Fathom the only one immune to its power. In The Blue Carbuncle, Sherlock Holmes says that every good stone is a nucleus and focus of crime, and I think it would have brought a really interesting aspect to the story if they'd given the fire dragon this kind of power. It's not that kind of film though, there's not a huge amount of depth to the plot, and it would have meant a reduction in the amount of time that Raquel Welsh spends in a variety of different costumes. I think Serapkin gets a little too much screen time and would have worked better as a brief interlude rather than being present from his introduction right up until the end of the film and if the act had been a little more self-contained it might have been a bit easier to follow. But it's still a lot of fun. Raquel Welsh does a good job as well as looking sensational she is perfectly believable in the role. Her acting gets criticised a lot. You can't ignore she has her knockers. But I think she carries this film as the main lead really well. It doesn't make a huge deal over the fact that she's a woman and treats her far better than quite a lot of modern action films treat female characters. She is initially recruited not because she's a woman but because she's an excellent skydiver. They don't introduce a female villain so she can have a cat fight with and uh, she isn't seduced by anyone. She entirely rejects the advances of the potential love interest. It's subversion of common cliches of films of the time and some modern movies that makes it interesting and it would be refreshing to see more films with these same points in our supposedly more enlightened time. Fathom should really be more of a feminist icon. I think if it had been more campy and silly or if it had been more of a straightforward spy thriller it probably would have been better regarded today but it wouldn't be as fun an oddity as the film is if it leaned more heavily one way or the other. I enjoy it. It's a bit of throwaway entertainment that could have been more than it is based on the premise and it might have worked better and been more well remembered than it is if, if it had been. But it's still worth a watch. I don't think there's any chance of this ever getting a remake because there's no chance anyone is interested in making it. And I don't think there are any actors who could inhabit Fathom in the same way that Welsh did. But you never know. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>